are Myth Vision. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Myth Vision Podcast. I'm going to tell you about the deceit that the Church of Scientology has, I guess, been doing to many people, especially in America, who claim to be Christians and are coming to this idea of like, oh, I can be a Scientologist and a Christian at the same time. Today, I have Karen De La Carriere joining us, and Karen is going to explain to us how they use these tactics of, eh, bring your Buddhism, bring your Christianity, bring your whatever, but specifically Christianity, they have a cross and they really like to say, oh, no, no, you can be a Christian and a Scientologist. So take us into this. Where do we begin? First of all, it's baloney that you can be another religion and a Scientologist. Maybe you can do some lower level little intro courses, but you would never, ever be allowed to do. <laughs> the upper levels is where you learn that you're not a single entity, that your multiples all jammed together. You've got all these hundreds of body things. You would never be allowed anywhere near that. Mm -hmm. And if you keep on with your, you have to get permission to go to a wedding in a Baptist church. You've got to write to the, the authority to ask if you could go to a funeral if it's an Episcopalian. Oh no, Scientology does not, that you say at the cross. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they use these words, ecclesiastical, religion, in every press release, they try to give a religious image. Now, you know, the IRS said they could not get tax exemption unless they were completely a unique religion, not Christianity merged in with Scientology. You've got to have certain parameters. What I want to start off with is telling you how Scientology is a reverse engineered religion. What does that mean to you, Derek? Reverse engineered. Reverse engineered. I mean, uh, would you, well, if you asked me what reverse engineering is, is taking something that's already something and figuring out how it was made. Uh, so you're kind of, uh, I guess you'd say, if you're saying Scientology is a reverse engineered, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm literally <laughs> guessing here, they're taking what already are religions and trying to mimic them in some way, but they're really not themselves these religions, I guess you're trying to get at? Partially right. They hired scholars, religious scholars, and there are religious scholars that praise them, but then you find out they got a quarter of a million dollars mm. to write some paper saying. They, they tried to take away the word cult and call it New Age religion. The newer the newer religions that try to use the word new. A reverse engineered religion is Scientology found out from these religious scholars, what are the basic elements to make a religion a religion? For example, it needs to have a moral code like the Ten Commandments. So Scientology quickly put out way to happiness, their precept. It needs Sunday services. So Scientology invented this bogus Sunday service. Sunday service is somebody standing up, reading an L. Ron Hubbard issue or two. <laughs> Look, Scientology has no deity, no worship, no God, no higher supreme being to call on or look on. Now, you're atheist, mm -hmm. so you agree, you can agree with a lot of that, right? There is nothing. I mean, I, I definitely don't think there is a God, but that's that definitely looking into Scientology and knowing a few things they teach, I'm like, you guys are not what I would think of. The reason I'm an atheist is more the lack of evidence for things, right? Yeah. It sounds like they're not approaching it that way. They're approaching it with all these other superstitions that are really, really out there, in my opinion. But, yeah. yeah. The, the body patents and the exorcism. So, yeah. lower level, Scientology is more just 
a life coaching kind of Tony Robbins, you know, kind of life coaching. It, it's not religious at all. There's nothing religious about it at all. So to glump themselves as a religion is a program from the hierarchy. If you look at the phrase success in numbers, well, they want, they want to be super, they want the evangelical movements to go, we're one of you. We're, we're like you. If they come after us today, they'll come after you tomorrow. So let's band together. And Scientology puts on religious conferences, expensive ones where they fly in important religious people from different, they pay everything, airfare, hotel, and people are invited to this grand conference to mull around. And the reason is befriend us. We're your friend. Mm. And when we're in tough litigation, write a nice letter to the judge as an amicus brief. You know how big entities can write to the judge to influence the judge. You can send any letter to the judge. But I've gotten off the subject of reverse engineering. They found the basic elements that they must have to qualify as a religion. And then they custom designed Scientology to fit in with what a religion is expected to have. A moral code, Sunday services, confession, uh, just just the basic, just just the basic camaraderie within uh, special special services for they've even got their own christening ceremony for babies because these were just reverse engineered must haves to qualify as a religion. Right. Yeah. And that's how they are able to be tax free and to have a legal way in keeping the government from getting involved. I think the Russians were smart in, in absolutely banning them from Russia. Like they're not even allowed in Russia, yeah. even the, yeah. uh, there's a Jesus cult where a guy claims to be Jesus. He got arrested. Yeah. So like, I think, I think Russia is like, yeah, these um, ridiculous out there religions uh, or they claim to be religions. Nah, that ain't happening. I wonder if that's what they I, I haven't read into it, but I wonder if that's what they were thinking. But you see, here's the con. This is the con. When you walk in the door, they they're not honest with you. They're not up front. They're very evasive. If somebody says, do you believe in God or do, is there a God? They go, oh, that's, that's upper level of secrets. You got to mm. do this upper level. They're not up front in saying, ultimately, we believe you are God. I am God. All of this is a creation of ours. We mucked it up. We created it. Because hmm. that's the core belief of Scientology. And why people keep giving them money is they're buying their godship stage by stage by stage. The voice of Bart, the, you know, Bart Simpson? Mm -hmm. Nancy Cartwright is the voice of Bart. And she really explicitly said, Scientology, she, she did a video, maybe she wasn't PR trained to hide their secrets. And she went, I'm just buying my godhood. I'm, I'm doing the different steps so I can be God, become a God, <laughs> which is exactly what. <laughs> now, she was $200,000 deep, right, at least? or Oh, she gave them $10 million. $10 million. <sighs> Even though her fiancé was money extorted to the, the bone and threw himself off a very high bridge in the Bay Area, California, and killed himself. Oh, Even wow. though this man she loved dearly killed himself after he went bankrupt when Scientology gouged him for all his net. She still gave another few million. I think mm -hmm. she's up to 15 million and counting in donations. 
So by telling these evangelicals, we're like you, we, we're brothers. We're a religion, you're a religion, let's all band together. No, these evangelicals don't know. Scientology ultimately tries to make you realize you are God. You are God, Dennis. I am God. Everyone is a God. I know there are loose statements like God is in you, which. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But they take that and they're they're running with it and they're making. So this this is weird. It's kind of a weird blend of Mormonism and evangelicalism in a strange way, because Mormons actually believe the men will actually become gods of their wow. own planets. Yeah. But it, it's a weird blend. I, I'd like to say this, though. Um, you mentioned something about abortion, and I feel like we might as well go all the way with everything you sent me in this email just to go and dig deep into the whole con of this thing and how they were treating women. I say this up front. Women who, you know, it's their body, and what they do with it is their choice. But what we're about to describe, I think, isn't their choice. These are mandated. And can you imagine being told by an employer or someone, you have to? go and get rid of this child. And I figure if it's okay, I could read you uh, yeah. something. I just want to say, just as a prefix, we are not, for our audience, pro-life, anti-life. We're not, we're not in those camps at all. We're not saying this because we believe that we should be pro-life or anti-life. We are just exposing coerced and forced abortions by church hierarchy. It's the complete opposite of Mormonism wants you to have 20 children <laughs> so there'll be a new generation of more. They want you to have babies and babies and multiple wives and you have 50 children, 60 children. Scientology want to maybe slaughter every time you get pregnant. Is the reverse. <laughs> that's crazy. That's so, yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely over the top. And so, I do want to say, I mean, I am for women's choice, you know, but that the point is, this is irrelevant to that is what you're trying to say. Right. This is not a matter of pro-life, anti-life, whatever. Yeah. The point yeah. is they're mandating. This yeah. is a forced abortion. Yeah. And can you imagine, I mean, someone who's like, well, I'm pro-life. If your husband forced you every time, I mean, it, it is your body or the man that got you pregnant enforces you to have that abortion or whatever, you know, like th that's, well, I thought it was my body. So I'd like to read a statement from Planned Parenthood, if you don't mind. Yes, please. In 1977, in response to the high volume of Scientology staff sent to have abortions, the head of Planned Parenthood in Riverside, California, Janet Hahn Alex said, I just felt that it was strange that they would all make the same decision independent of their individual circumstances. They had all made the decision to have an abortion, no matter how old they were or how many children they already had. We found that almost unbelievable. And when we started asking more questions in order to find out their individual motives, because we were suspicious, they stopped coming to us altogether. But they found them out to other, they were, this particular Planned Parenthood was, can you imagine Planned Parenthood? was thinking this is too much. Planned Parenthood, who's been <laughs> this to yeah. the pregnancies, even they were aghast because every day buses, huge buses of pregnant women every Friday or every Thursday were sent to, were, were, or these were young girls ordered to have their abortions, ordered, ordered. And you know what, Derek? When these girls finally left Scientology, they, some of them went back to their Catholic roots and they told their priests and the priests told the bishops and the bishops told the Vatican, all of this data of the Vatican is emphatically against right, <laughs> right. Never mind coerced emotions. And the Vatican did a pronouncement that Scientology is a demonic cult or a demonic, they use the word demonic because they believe when you kill life and slaughter life, right. you're forced and coerced to. That's not religious. <laughs> the Vatican used the word demonic. You know, they're not so, wrong in that description. They're really yeah. not. I mean, this is, this is a seriously high control. 
and I, you know, I have to admit, I mean, there's the same problem in many other groups, including if you look into the history of the Catholic Church, there's some stuff bad back then. But it's almost like they're trying to learn from their mistakes. You see, Scientology is way behind the learning curve, and I don't know if it's even something that could be fixed. I think this thing's rotten to the root, just like John Knox used to say about the Catholic Church when he was a Protestant. But the point is, <laughs> I think this really is. I don't see reform being uh, being Can't possible. Be. With this, Harvard, oh. Harvard put his words in an atomic iron brain and has all you can't alter anything, change anything. You so, know, yeah. I was going to say something that you know that they're forcing these women to be to go through. This is like really dark. I mean, you don't have to take a position on either way of how you view abortions in general. Forced, mandated abortion, that's not even a religion at this point. I mean, can you imagine a religion demanding you to kill your child, right? Like to do these things yeah. like this is normal. Mm -hmm. um, I can't imagine it, but we're talking about ancient, like Mayan child sacrifice type, yeah. weird, really old. This is like kind of a modern day, you know, child sacrifice actually yeah. happening here for the sake of the religion or the, the organization. I do want to talk about the OT stuff here. You sent me yeah, this you know, really one small thing. Yeah, I'm glad you I'm glad yeah. you just one final thing. The why to kill off pregnant, you know, fetuses and stuff is Scientology does it for greed. We can't have staff taking family time and being they need to work for the cult. They don't call themselves a cult, but the whole thing is done. <laughs> Because of corporate need for you to work around the clock, not have kids, not have family time, not be a mom, not be a dad. So the why you can't have babies is you need to work for Scientology and its survival 24-7, 365. We can't have you taking maternity leave and da, 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 da. So I just wanted you to know why they order. Can you imagine they do that just out of corporate greed? <laughs> that you know that really does blow my mind because if they wanted to be a successful organization if i can call it that to be kind you would want to multiply you would want your your people to have more people so that they can become scientologists and you have more people who descend from those people who then pass it on and keep on sharing the scientology message doesn't seem like these guys are thinking. They're thinking right now, more money right now. We need to keep Bob at work. We need Sally here. Like, you know, not even considering that reproducing is a – why do you think um, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world? Yeah. I mean, they are multiplying, and yeah. they have up to four wives they can have. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's a whole yeah. different thing. I'm just making a point that, like – it's, good yeah. point. it's a good point. I would be a grandma today, but my daughter-in-law who married my son who died, she was forced, forced to abort. And she just, it just crippled her emotionally. Mm. And of course, after that, soon after that, she even left. She and, you know, there's an emotional trauma when you don't want to lose a baby and you're forced to abort so that that baby can't be born anyway um, I, I was going to say about this christians don't know that they think you are god i want to preface that with that with the with the technology i brought up because there's some really interesting uh points in which why you had me pop this up on the screen for people to see but you don't know that you're really god according to scientology until you, you get to them? these certain them? yeah can you pay, 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 pay? Yeah. Yeah. It's a pay as you go religion. <laughs> the only reason you can continue is more money, more money, more money. But you're not going to have the awareness. Now, any religious scholars or any people of any faith watching this, please know Scientology is not your brother or cousin or even distant relative in religion. First of all, there is no God, there is no higher authority there is there's and hubbard mocked christianity uh every man 
is then shown to have been crucified. So don't think that it's an accident that this crucifixion, they found out that this applied. Somebody somewhere on this planet, back about 600 B.C., found some pieces of R6. And I don't know how they found it, either by watching Mad Men or something, but since that time they have used it, and it became what is known as Christianity. Uh, the man on the cross. There was no Christ. But the man on the cross is shown as every man. So, of course, each person seeing a crucified man has an immediate feeling of sympathy for this man. Therefore, you get many PCs who says they are Christ. Now, there's two reasons for that. One is the Roman Empire was prone to crucify people. So a person can have been crucified. But in R6, he is shown as crucified. I'll send you a little, did I send you the video where Hubbard in his own voice said, there was no Christ. Uh -uh. This was some psychiatric implant. I'll say, maybe you could just, I've got in his own voice, Hubbard mocking Christianity. And he says, the, my, I, let it, let him, I'll just send that to you, Derek. You, okay. you, you might want to just put a little blurb in the No middle. problem. So, so Scientology is not a cousin to Christianity, evangelicals and all the other religions. First, Scientology says, you are God. Second, Scientology aborts babies wholesale. That's not very Christian or, or whatever faith you're in. Now, we're moving on to number three. Derek showed a picture. Yeah, this is this is a very interesting technology you sent me. And you, you mentioned in the email that you can snap your fingers. If you pay enough money and become a high enough OT, you can snap your fingers and create a planet or a universe. I mean, galaxies, whatever. Yeah. The wishful thinking is just unbelievable. Yeah. Well, there was a pronouncement Hubbard's made when you're OT, snap your fingers and boom, a nebula, a galaxy can appear. This is the kind of. <laughs> wow. Well, what is this, though? What is this? There is a procedure that they sell um, called superpower. And it's in this extension building they have where you showed the cross, that building. Yeah. That, this one right here? That building, in that building they deliver something called superpower. Superpower used millions of dollars in R&D, research and discovery, to build these space age machines. And you go through, for example, you'll be spun around high speed upside down, and it's got to tune you into vertigo. You've got to sense what is north, south, east, west after you've been jiggled around like you're in a washing machine. What's religious about that? Another procedure would be you've got to heighten your sense of taste. So blindfolded, you'll be given lemon, lime, peppermint. And you've got to know the difference between <laughs> peppermint and lime. Well, and that's the, easy. <laughs> and it, it gets weirder and weirder. There are all these different machines, which they spent millions. They went to NASA and they got some data of what their astronauts had to go through. And then they built a reverse engineered a machine. And so for $25,000, you can go through all these funky, I've got more pictures for you these different machines. Now, answer me, Derek, <laughs> how is that religious? How does it make you kinder, more benign, more thoughtful to fellow men? Does telling the difference between mango and banana in taste and smell, is that going to make you more spiritual, more Christian, more religious, more thought? Never mind the Christian words. What about making you more charitable, right? more willing to just help fellow men. All you did was 
do some space ridiculous stuff to make you throw up and do all these smell and test things. And this is the opening sequence of what they call super power. Yeah, I don't know. religious about it. I can't put my but finger on it. So, Derek, every month there's some new, huge con artist being featured by Tony Ortega on the Tony Ortega blog or some huge new indictment by federal authorities of a Scientologist who had his three L's, who had superpower, who audit counseled his body patents for years. He exercised himself and now he's this crook ripping off Medicaid for $75 million or ripping off investors. Every month, there's some new scoundrel, a rogue, a thief being indicted and towed away in handcuffs after years of Scientology <laughs> enlightenment. Yeah, because they're so much more enlightened. You know, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, that that is weird uh, doing all those things. I don't know what they're doing them for. It doesn't sound like anything that I'm aware of. I do know that religions do like to tap into the senses. This is a way in which they indoctrinate you. Why do you think frankincense, for example, plays a huge role in church? And I'm not saying anything bad by it. Like, I'm not I'm not knocking it. Uh, the visuals when you go into a cathedral, you're in awe. You're looking up to something more majestic, right? So so I wonder if, like you said, they're reverse engineering, knowing psychologically, because it's not like L. Ron Hubbard didn't know what psychology taught. Mm -hmm. He just tried to create his own little empire of a new, Scient a new uh, psychological approach, and they, they gave him the no. I'm pretty sure peer review probably saw him and said, no, this is not good. And this is not scientific. And he's like, what? No, but he knows a lot of this stuff. So he and people who are following him, potentially, I'm just hypo I'm being hypothesizing here yeah. that they're tapping into smell, taste, sight, hearing, and touch. And they're doing all of this in some kooky way to try and get you involved into it like other religions have. So they're reverse engineering it. Derek, the inside of, I sent you a couple of pictures. It's spectacular. It's overwhelming. Like This here? Yeah. Uh, there are many more pictures of the corridors and the machines. And it's, wow, you know, it's overpowering. But what does it do? <laughs> How does it make you more? <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever been in any of it? Or is this stuff that came after your time? I, they... Well, do you know that they kept promising how this would change the world? Superpower would change the world. And they just needed your donation for this building and the equipment. And they got, they raised $200 million what? for one building. I mean, this is a building in Clearwater. It's not in New York, Manhattan, or, you know, Beverly Hills, Los Angeles. This is. They got two hundred million for a clear water building, and they kept on and on. And because people were giving money, they thought, oh, "Superpower!" Even the name, I want. I want to have superpower. Well, that they might be why they're money. doing it. Yeah. For twenty years, they they it was a money extortion racket, and then a guy called Luis Garcia departed. And very public, he was OT8. He went as high as they went. And he said, they have, they asked me for $40,000 for the cross. They said, Lewis, this is going to be your monument. You will die. And he said, $40,000 for a cross. And they said, you should be honored. We're asking the mounting of it and the this and that. Guess what? Luis Garcia gave them $40,000. And then he found out 60 other people paid $40,000 for the same cross. Oh, they're good. The cross. The cross. They're good. They were paid for the cross. Mm -hmm. They are slick. Holy moly, that's wild. And when, when Luis found that out, he got so furious that he sued them 
for non-delivering superpower, although he had paid thousands and thousands for. So then after the Luis Garcia lawsuit, they thought we've strung them along for 20 years, promising superpower, superpower. Meanwhile, the money was being raked in, 200 million for a building. And then after the Luis Garcia lawsuit, they then opened the doors for superpower. So all of this stuff technically is a bunch of nonsense. Like they're just technically putting a front up that looks good to try and make, hey, this is where your money went, just so you know. And it has powers. Yeah. You just can't see them. And they're there. It's it's nonsense. It's pretty Derek, much. Derek, you know. <laughs> they're trying to get the white why benefits of the First Amendment if they only admitted this is if this may be new age, this may be funky, this may be some kind of life coaching to increase your perception, but they're getting religious tax exemption for this. There's yeah. nothing religious about smelling, you know, the, the black between your toes and a tomato. There's nothing religious. <laughs> Oh, you are wonderful. You know, this is great. I mean, that's why I said I feel like your reverse engineering thing fits this as well. And and, and I saw those connections because the, the five senses are absolutely used throughout all ancient religions. This is known. So these people, like you said, probably hired experts and realized it's got to be something that we can say it does something. Yeah. Uh, here, taste this lemon, taste that lime, taste this uh, peppermint. Oh, and the reason we're doing that is because the Thetans and whatever, some BS they might feed people. And they are convinced of their myth, if I can use the term, that they've created. And people are buying it. I mean, it, you literally can give people just off of the placebo effect yeah. uh, something here. And this... This seems to be like that. Like, hey, come get on this little thing on the right side and we'll spin you around and the Thetans will actually start flinging out of your body. You won't even realize it. You'll start to level. I mean, I'm, I'm already making crap up as I'm speaking about it, right? And, and, you know, like they're coming out of your body quicker. I mean, like, couldn't that convince you if you were stuck and it was like a priest, if you will, someone that you uh, as an authority in the Scienti Scientology church? Like it would convince somebody, I feel, but... Well, uh, you know, some Russian or Ukrainian woman woman came and had all this and all, and then she went back and she just crashed and burned and her business and all, and she sued them. You know, uh, the reverse of what you promised will happen. I, I'm not superly powerful. I'm superly <laughs> in the shit can. And they quickly settled with it. They didn't want a lot of noise and publicity of that. I'll tell you, Derek, someone will go do superpower, take off their clothes like Lisa McPherson, right after superpower and walk naked down Port Harrison. <laughs> and that will blow up their fantasy yeah. public relations nonsense on superpower. Wow. There's, you know, sooner or later, someone will have a mental breakdown. Of, you wait, you wait. Yeah. Anyway, I like this little segment. Uh, we'll end off. I like this little segment because myth is a key word. It's a key word. You're exposing the <laughs> the propaganda, the lies, the propaganda, the fakes. And Scientology is the poster child for absolute lies. Mm. The lies that they tell at the same time they want you to feel they are religious. Ladies and gentlemen, Karen de la Carriere, she is here. We are the myth busters, if you will. We come to literally expose all the nonsense that you find within Scientology. And we've only scratched the surface. I mean, there's so many more stories that literally she could have gone into three other stories or or, or more of uh, deaths that have occurred under the watch of them, the way that they treat people, they're way behind the learning curve, all because their prophet, if I can use the term, L. Ron Hubbard, their master who had all the answers, um, 
set in stone in writing technically uh, how they're going to go about doing everything that they do. How do you wipe your butt? Oh, use your left hand. Okay, using my left hand. Like everything is told by him and you have to follow that. Yes. And this whole episode just it makes me think how clever they are. I mean, from the outside, this looks stupid. I'm going to be honest. It literally, like, for someone who's never in it, but someone who's never been, like, a, a, a certain other religion might look at it and go, that looks stupid, right? So, but if you were buying into it, you had L. Ron Hubbard sticks in your hands, and you thought, I'm going to achieve OT8. I'm going to become superpower. I'm, I'm a god. <laughs> you know, you... You might be convinced, you know, you just might, literally. <laughs> Any Anything else you'd like to say, Karen? You have saved people half a million dollars. You just, it just you, you, you've just saved people's bank accounts. This one episode, if you watch it, listen to something, <laughs> you, you may have saved some people going in who sort of wanted a child. You're never going to have a child in the Sea Org. You're going to be forced to abort. So... <laughs> Listen to Derek. Listen to this channel. You know, I, I always say don't drink the Kool-Aid. But in this case, don't taste the lemon. Don't touch the lime. And don't even sniff the mint. Because you go down that path, you're screwed, okay? I'm just saying. Uh, seriously, I love you. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, I, I always look forward to these. These are super fun. And there's so many more topics that we can get into uh, let us know what you'd be interested in hearing about because I'm pretty sure Karen knows a story or two. She's been around for a long time. So comment down in the description in the in the comment section. I really want to hear your feedback about not only this episode, be kind, please. If not, you know, mama said, if it ain't nice, don't say it, you know. But if you have something that you'd be interested in hearing that you think you've heard about when it comes to Scientology, I can always pitch it to Karen. We're going to be paying attention to your comments. We'd be happy to do an episode to discuss that topic if it's something that is obviously worth talking about. And um, you might know a lot about it, Karen. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. Can you please contribute to the channel? Do a one-time donation. Be a patron. Just keep it alive. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. And thank you all for those of you who support us here at Myth Vision. It's what we do. We show you the myths. And then you have to make your mind up on whether you want to remain in cognitive dissonance or if you're ready to step out and be free. <laughs> thank you. We are Myth Vision. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that show. I have hundreds of other ones on the Patreon, letting you guys know you can help us continue doing what we're doing at Myth Vision Podcast. Also, you can have questions asked to the academics that I research with and I interview. Your question can be asked in a 1080p high quality video that might end up on YouTube. Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to expose the cults, show these superstitions for what they are, and the errors within these texts and all of these religions to help people realize they're all man-made and that we have what it takes. All we need to do is pull together. And let me tell you something. The religious world has the financial backing that those skeptics such as myself don't have. So if you want to help and be a participant, you can for a little, little bit a month. It's not much. If you want to go more, you can. But like I said, this is how I can keep the lights on for Myth Vision. 